and these other people are not doing that. Do you know how many idiots and buffoons I had in our Facebook group? For those of you who are not members of our Facebook group, TMI, you can go look that up. Letters TMI, great group to be a part of, by the way. I find myself posting in there more and more lately. We had a bunch of dudes, they were upset about what they heard Michelle Rodriguez say here last week. Now, for those of you who are not familiar, the actress Michelle Rodriguez has said that minorities need to stop stealing white people's superheroes. You got a black Johnny Storm, and they want to make a... They, they were offering, well, there was some talk, some rumor about Michelle Rodriguez being Green Lantern. And she was like, no, go create your own mythologies. Go create your own. And the reason for that is because this is another way of binding you. Of making you the damn bastard stepchild. And here you are happy to be it now. They have made you happy to be the bastard stepchild. You're up here. Black folk do not want to be superheroes. They want to be Clark Kent. I don't want to be myself. I want to be him. And if you really want to test if it's a whitewashing brother, because we all know that Superman has that little spit curl in front of his forehead. You go let a black person say they want to be Superman. Watch them put the curl on their head. Looking as ridiculous as Samuel L. Jackson in Robocop with that preposterous wig on his head. But my point about it is that we don't want to be ourselves. We're trying to be the black face on a white identity. That's just how bound to it we are. That And I had a bunch of dudes yeah. co-signing it, saying that she was wrong. She didn't know what she was talking about. Now, these are guys sitting right next to me talking about she's wrong for saying we should want our own superheroes. And you know why? It's because what they are exposing is, hey, I want, I'm waiting for my chance to get called up to their big leagues, not my own. I don't want what, what black folk have isn't worth anything. I want to be a part of their machine, not this mess you talking about. And, and it's by their rules because everybody talk about a black a Black Panther movie. Yeah, the character's skin may be black, but it's still a white character because white people made it. And it's going to be a white studio putting that move character out. So he's not going to be Mr. Black Empowerment that I don't want white people in Wakanda. It's going to be, please, Avengers, save me. That's what's going to happen. And, and my thing is, is that it took me a second to think about it when you're talking about that. And it got me thinking, look what Robert Kirkland did with Walking Dead. His mythology, his image, don't even use the word zombie. And look how big that's gotten. And I forgot the guy's name who, who wrote Game of Thrones. That's what that is, his image. And we have so many bro other brother out there made a fan-made Dragon Ball series. And it looks damn good. But we have so many people out here with the talent. But they want to keep hopping on because you can have a black Johnny Storm all day, but he will always be the white Johnny Storm. That character is always going to be white, and white people made it. Maybe that we have a black superhero that we make. It may not be as big as Batman or Superman, but it's ours, and we control that image. And I believe that we don't, we, we as a people keep looking at, oh, we don't make as much money as the white man. We don't know that. And look what, we don't know we might make as much as the white man. But here's another thing as well. And this is part of 7 a.m. We talked to Carol's daughter. I didn't notice. The problem is, what a black person sell it to the highest bidder when the first sign of uh, adversity hits? That's another problem. We are trying to wedge ourselves and, and wedge ourselves into white society so badly that we're just giving up everything. We're just giving up everything. We don't care about anything. We want to give up everything. We, we do not care. We are not concerned with what we have to sacrifice as long as if, 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 if we can get in there, we'll be okay. And as you understand, Tobias, as you just articulated it, all they're doing is throwing in a black character because this is a money ploy. Because Fox has not been able... Fox is only making this Fantastic Four movie so they don't lose the rights to it. Not because any of the Fantastic Four movies have made money. They're just holding on to it in the hopes that one day it will. Sony is not making Spider-Man movies because they're making money anymore. The Spider-Man movies are really 
just breaking even for them now, which is why they're turning creative control back over to Marvel. They're, they're doing it for the money. And they are putting in a black Johnny Storm simply because that's supposed to appeal to a wider, broad fan base. You couldn't replace Reed Richards. Wasn't going to do that because he's a leader. You're not going to replace Thing because he's the most popular one. Uh, I guess you wasn't going to make a black female as Sue Storm. We weren't going to go for that one. So her little brother Johnny. I wonder if this will be her little brother in here, by the way. I'm wondering how Johnny Storm is still Sue Storm's brother. I wonder how that's going to work. By the way, in case for those of you who don't know, that's supposed to be her brother now. Talk about the Dudley boys. But I wonder how they're going to make that work. But in any case, his job is to deliver a broader audience. So that black folk who are tired of seeing the same old thing, his job is to deliver a broader audience. He is there to deliver black dollars. But ultimately, the dollars ain't going to him. They're going to the people who brought him there. And what, what will they do? In a little while, they'll cycle him out. They're just going to cycle him out. As a matter of fact, I think they're making this movie for the purpose of just having a one-off. And that's it. But ultimately, he will be cycled out. You, you, you will not get to stay. You will not get to stay at all. Now, Tobias, I want you to stay on the line here, okay? Okay. Stay on the line because... This is caller from 804. Is this Chris? You know it is, brother, a.k.a. the Surreal Wonder. How are you, Mr. TBA? Surreal Wonder. We haven't heard from you in a while. I still exist, my friend. I still exist. Uh, existence is a good thing um, when you can find it. Now, you were saying, <laughs> I think you were misunderstanding the point in the chat room there, but you were saying uh, something about the Black Panther cartoon being full of black characters. Um, yes, um, I would simply say like uh, when when he was describing well, it was going to be it was going to be made up by a white director, white artist, and white scriptwriter. I was like I simply mentioned like the Black Panther was filmed by Reginald Hudlin, which is a black guy who did a couple of other black uh, movies, and he did a great job with the Black Panther animated series, and it was oozing with black pride. And I do get your point. I was just naming the example of a black director getting in hold, getting a hold of a good comic book character and showing him as a proud African man rather than a debased stereotype. Okay, well, first of all, Reginald Hudlin, I don't consider him to be qualified to do this movie. Okay. Not taking any shots at anybody, and I'm not saying take the job away from him. What I am saying is Antoine Fuqua has chops at doing action movies. Reginald Hudlin, granted... He's been writing comic books for, what, 10, 15 years. You know, he's yeah. he's not, he didn't just show up out of the either one day. But I kind of question his ability to direct what essentially would be an action movie, which is a superhero movie. I kind of question his ability to do that. Now, let's just say that that is not an issue at all. Let's just say it's not an issue at all. Here is the problem, Surreal. And this is the point that Tobias was making and Michelle Rodriguez was making and I was making. Here is the problem. Do we... Do... Who owns Black Panther? Marvel. Who controls Black Panther? Marvel. Who's going to pass Black Panther down? Marvel. Even if Black Panther is serving... Even in a tertiary way... Even if it is serving some sort of redeeming interest today. Brother, we've been down this road before. The Cosby Show. A Different World. We've been down this road before. Oprah. Yeah, absolutely. BET. Right. We've been down this road before. Essence. A black face on a white product. So here's the problem. No matter how good a job Reginald Hudlin does... That it does, what does that do for the black community as a whole? And how do you prevent Disney, who owns Marvel, how do you present, prevent Disney with their track record on black folk, Song of the South, how do you prevent Disney from coming along in a later generation and bastardizing Black Panther? 
How do you yeah, prevent them from doing that? Right. I'm sorry. I'm, now, understand something. This, this is the rap music yeah. strategy. We yeah. as black people let white society and white corporations come into our midst. We let them grab a character, put a black face on it, or come and take something that belongs to us, and then we let them pull the strings. And they're like, hey, there's no problem. We love this thing. It's great. It's wonderful. We just came to give you some help with it. Now, if you refuse to accept their, quote, help, all of a sudden they don't want you around. And if you do accept their, quote, help, ultimately it winds up being them telling you what to do. Which is what happened with Antoine Fuqua, F. Gary Gray. You get the point now. The executives come. Understand something. Reginald Hudlin is not writing this movie. It is executives writing this movie. And they chose him because he's safe. Let's just be totally honest about it. Where are these spinoff characters from Black Panther? Now, I haven't picked up a comic book. I haven't picked up a comic book in many moons. I haven't picked up a comic book in many moons. Black Panther was created by Jack Kirby back in the late 60s. Somewhere around there, late 60s, early 70s. Black Panther was created by a white man, Jack Kirby. The Falcon, Jack Kirby. Battlestar, we can go down the list. These were all creations of white men from decades ago. Here's the question, brother. Where are the new ones? Blade, creation of Marv Wolfman, decades ago. But you notice they ain't hurting themselves to make a bunch of new black characters in their movies or in their comic books. They're not making right. they're not making spin-off characters from the world of Wakanda. There is one black superhero from the world from the African continent, and that is well, if, if you don't count Storm, that is Black Panther. They're not letting they're not doing with Black Panther what they do with literally every other character spinoffs derivative characters they don't do any of that blade in the blade movies there were no spinoff characters oh i'm sorry there were some going to be some spinoff characters um what's her name jessica beale and and ryan reynolds from the blade yep. trilogy blade yeah. trinity they were going to make a spinoff for them and then wesley got jammed up and they decided they went off in different directions for those two people but they were gonna be oh, there was gonna be a spinoff from Blade, all right. The two white characters. Did you notice they never developed any black characters? There was a black woman who was with Blade in the first movie, and understand, Wesley Snipes had a lot of say in the first movie. If you take a look, he's even one of the producers. Wesley Snipes had a lot of say in that first movie. There he had and no she was say. A dark skinned black woman. Well. Dark skinned black woman. Um and Sana Lathan, who was lighter but and whatnot, we didn't have this that really light motor oil colored thing that they usually like so much but by the time you got to that third movie Wesley Snipes was the only black man to be seen except a cameo I think by the chief of police they always make us the token chief of police by that third movie they had completely whitewashed everything by that third movie Wesley Snipes was the only black person left to be totally honest Wesley was the only black person the Blade 1 was the only movie that had any type of black presence in it. Blade 2 and 3, Wesley Snipes was a black man in a white world. And I never noticed, and I love those movies. And most of us do, but they hooked you with that first one. Well, that first one is safe. And by the time they made that turn, you didn't even know they had made it. And you're sitting there going along for the ride being waxing nostalgic about movie number one because they know as we said black folk are eternally grateful we're so we are so overjoyed to be recognized to have our existence recognized that if anybody recognizes our existence man we we will bend over backwards forward and sideways for them we will do anything for that recognition it's a damn shame and you're so right it's like all black people love black movies because they are black movies. It doesn't even matter if it's a bad black movie. As long as you have like three prominent black actors in it that we can identify easily, we love it and we take we cherish it. Bad movies. Uh, Ninety seconds. Plane. How much of us haven't seen Soul Plane five times? Hmm? And I'm I'm telling you that rap music. You've seen this template. You've seen it with rap. Yeah. You've seen it with BET. 
if they want their the only reason they're making the Black Panther movie is because there was a lot of public outcry for it. We'll see what it finally ends up looking like. But my real thing about that is that as time goes on, you're going to have an opportunity to see what's really going on with this. You're going to have an opportunity to actually ju judge exactly what's happening with this. And what I'm telling you is that this always turns out the same way. There's going to be a turn. There's going to be a right. turn, but you look for that movie to look like every other one. You take a look at Hancock. Did much better than Superman, Man of Steel, and Batman Begins, and ain't nobody talked to Will Smith about a sequel for Hancock. Now they are talking about making Will Smith a white man, dead shot, for a Suicide Squad movie. I mean, I'm not joking. Will Smith, for those of y'all, you've seen the headlines for it there. Will Smith is supposed to be dead shot in the... Uh, they're making a Suicide Squad movie, and Will Smith is supposed to be dead shot. So understand that 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 didn't take long for that turn to happen. They're Ten not going to make seconds. New, they're not going to make new black characters. That's not what they're going to do. They are not going to sit here and make more black characters and spin them off the way they do with the white ones. They're not going to do that. We've seen this formula before. Yep. They use us to gain an audience, and after they've gained the audience. Then all of a sudden, we're on the side of a milk carton. All of a sudden, we disappear. I'm sorry, go ahead, brother. You've seen this movie before. You've seen this movie before. I mean, you've seen this. We have all seen this happen before, where they bring us in at the beginning, and then they make this swerve, and next thing you know, after they make the swerve, all of a sudden, we get thrown out the car. It's swerved around the corner, and... And the and our white benefactors who were in the back seat, as soon as we spent as soon as we hang this corner over here, we get flung out and they're behind the wheel. How the hell that happened? And we keep doing it over and over again. Who's the biggest Sounds rapper like in Detroit? The movie I've ever heard. Yeah, who's the biggest rapper in Detroit? Well, now now they don't say he's the greatest rapper in the world. Are you kidding me? We we keep falling for this. That they put a black face out there. Brother, the Black Panther movie is for the purposes of avoiding criticism. They made over, a, what, almost $2 billion off that first Avengers movie. They can throw you a 20 or $30 million bone. And that's why they got a black director, because they know that black directors work with smaller budgets better than white directors do. So they're going to throw him a bone, and he's going to go make some little old movie, and we don't know if there'll ever be another one made again. And if it's not, oh well, we'll just tuck him in the Avengers, that's it. That's it. But they're making that for the one purpose only, to avoid the criticism that you don't have any prominent black heroes. They're going to tell you that they made a Black Panther movie, and then the next time you try to bring that subject up, they're going to say, we've got plenty. we got Blade, we got Black Panther, we got the Falcon. Now get out of our faces. Yep, the token. What you will not have is something that you own, control, and can pass down. What you will not have is something that you get to decide what happens with it. What you will not have is something that will be benefiting you long term. Watch what I tell you. It always happens the same. They are going to stick a white character next to Black Panther. They're going to. They're going to. It will happen. They're going to stick a white character next to him. And next thing you... Now, in white movies, the black character stays the sidekick. In movies with black characters, the white guy turns into the savior at some point. Yeah. I do feel what you're saying, man. They did the same thing with uh, the Pirates of Dark Water back in, like, the 1990s. It was, like, an all-black cast. But if they didn't make the hero protagonist, Ren, with blonde hair and blue eyes, would have never made the airwaves. Well, had to whiten it up for the for the kids. They've learned so that, and the, point, the playbook doesn't change. They just keep looking to see it how doesn't. short our attention span is. But the playbook doesn't change. So we they brought Reginald Hudlin out here. Well, his purpose is to do what? To deflect criticism. Well, you can't you say what, that brother? we're not giving opportunities to black people. Look at Reginald Hudlin. Reginald Hudlin's been doing this for fifteen years. Who do you have new? Who's new? You know what, you're right. They're letting, like, one guy per 10 years, and one of them is Lee Daniels. But, you know, you showed me a lot with that crowdfunding thing. We don't need them. Uh, we just need the names of the talented guys in our community that, that has, like, a Patreon or a crowdfunding source, because we can all pass the hat around, because I know that I'm not the only guy with a couple of bucks that wants to see black cartoons and black movies. 
Well, it'll be up to us, to first of all, to recognize that. And second of all, for us to get up and do something about it. We need people who are thorough. We need some people who are complete. You know what we really need? We need a crowdfunding of talent. You're right. Because that's what that's what white guys are doing. You know, like with um, Ed Burns. You know, he's got a sound guy, he's got a video guy, and he's a director. And that's how he makes his low-budget movies. It's just the three or four of them. And that's it. Nobody gets paid up front. Nobody gets paid up front. They all invest in it and they get paid on the back end. And in black society, we need to start doing that because you got folk who've been to film school. You got people who know cinematography. We, we need to get together on that level. We'll get a lead actor and a lead actress. We only pay the people that we have to. But like your cinematographer and your sound guy and the director and the leads that everybody agrees that, you know, we're going to put our talents into this. But everybody gets paid on the back end when we've actually made something out of it. So that we can use all of our resources to promote it. Because that's what we, that's right, what we lack well, at. Well, I'm saying that we're on Facebook on, and Twitter. I mean, like you said, most of black people are on Facebook and Twitter. So why can't we get the word out like that? Well, we, we can. Make that a trendy topic. We can, but we usually are putting up videos from World Star Hip Hop and whatnot. We can do it, brother. We have not made up our minds to do it. And other people are not, these, these people, Marvel is never going to encourage us to make our own characters. They will never do that. They, Marvel, as long as you are complaining about how Marvel ignores you, Marvel says you're still a customer. You're right. Matter of fact, does Wayne Riley have a Patreon or a crowdsourcer? Because I've seen his, I've seen what he does. And he's really good. He's really talented. I wouldn't mind backing him with my dollars. Well, he, he's, he's had one already, but here's the real thing. Wayne and Chris and other fellas like that, more than money, in my opinion, they need other talented black men to work with them so they can put out a bang product that really has legs to it. That, that, that's what really needs to happen. We really need to put out a, a, a good product, something that's really polished and whatnot. And like I said, that's something I would help with. As far as, you know, distribution or theatrical or whatever, that's something that we, that we should help with and make sure we give them as broad an audience as possible. But this going to these folk with our hands out and begging for, 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 for some crumbs to be flicked off the table, we got to stop that. We got to stop that because they're never, going to, they're never going to give us anything that benefits us. They're going to give us something that benefits them. They're not going to give us anything that benefits us. They're just going to throw something out there that, at worst, is going to swerve I mean, at worst, it's going to do nothing for us. And at best, it'll benefit us for one movie. Or at least it'll actually focus on us for one movie. And by the second movie, they'll begin the whitewashing. And next thing you know, by the time they get to movie number three, we have been completely removed and erased. And they spun off some white characters. And that's it. And we've seen this before. They keep doing it. Will Smith in Hancock. They slammed him next to Charlize Theron. Will Smith in Wild Wild West slammed him next to whoever the guy is. Yeah, he had to have a white sidekick for the Porky Pig role, yeah. a.k.a. comic relief, or the white validity to afford to have a mass appeal to audiences. Yeah, Same but I mean... With, uh, hitch. But they, yeah, exactly. But I mean, you see, they keep... But here's my thing is you see the pattern of behavior? Django Unchained. Yeah. Django Unchained. Yeah, yeah line. We keep, I mean, we keep falling for this. Blade with, uh, what's his name, Chris Christopherson? Yeah, you have to have Chris Christopherson or else it'll be a black movie. And we know how white people feel about black movies for the majority. Yeah, because you might not see race, but they do. Yeah, they do. I'm just thinking, wow, it's a good movie with two black actors. They're like, oh, I want to go near that black thing. They have too much black subjects and, blacks, uh, and black things I can't relate to. Yeah, Friends is not a white show, but Living Single is a black show, even though Friends was based yeah. on Living Single. So, like I say, brother, we don't see it, but they do. We've seen this pattern of behavior. It's not going to take them very long to remove you from the scene altogether, whether it's your TV shows or whatever. I'm telling you, like I say, I'm telling you that at best... What will you end up with at best? A successful franchise for Disney who, after they do this first movie and give him 30 or $40 million to make it, they'll be back for a second movie of 30 or $40 million. What they will not be trying to do is build Black Panther into a character whose popularity rivals Captain America or Thor. 
They are not going to be doing that. That's not the purpose. Yeah, so, yeah you just find him in like he just find a bunch of Black Panther cartoons in the bargain bin of Walmart. You didn't even know they came out. I know what you're speaking on, brother. So like I say, I, I do not uh I don't want I don't want Reginald to fail, and I don't want a Black Panther movie to fail. That's not what I want. What I'm saying is don't mistake this for anything other than what it is. If we want something, brother, yeah. we got to build it. If we want something that we can actually trust, because as Tobias knows this, and you know this too, Surreal, as black people, we keep outsourcing the telling of our story. We keep outsourcing it to white corporations, white writers, the NWA movie, right, white directors, David Ayers. We keep outsourcing our story. No other ethnic group in the world has a media apparatus that is controlled by white people. I put up a story just the other day that said the China's box office, if you don't count Canada, has for the first time ever, the Chinese box office surpassed the American box office in, I think it was January. The Chinese box office made more money than the American box office. 30, 30 40 years after Bruce Lee. Those seeds that he planted back then are blooming. And they are white folk come to them with their hat in hand. Ain't that right, Netflix Marco Polo? They come to them with hat in hand because the Chinese control it and they will not let you in to control their stories. Same thing with Telemundo and Univision. Latinos control it and they will not let white people come in and tell their stories. Black folk, where's my Black Panther movie? Where's my Blade movie? Where's my Falcon movie? We're the only right. people who are comfortable outsourcing the telling of our stories to non-black people. Well, you got Reginald Hudlin. Reginald Hudlin is an employee. And he will not put anything in that movie that is not approved by his employers. You're right. The only reason why the Black Panther cartoon got made the way it was because I heard online or from what I read that a lot of the higher-ups didn't see the script. And they okayed a lot of the budgeting because it was just based on the fact that a lot of the Marvel things were making a whole lot of money. But when they saw what actually what he was doing and how the cartoon was presented, uh, they, they buried it. They shoved it straight to Australia, which was the only place it was aired in the world. And then three, four, three to four years later, they brought it to America in Netflix. No advertisement. They buried it. So I have no idea what they're going to do with Reginald Hudlin on such a big spotlight because I know he can't do it like he did the cartoon because too much eyes are watching. And they are not going, ultimately, brother, you must remember this, remember this, remember this. It never changes. Remember this. Never. They are never going to approve a project that does not enhance their power, wealth, and influence. They're not going to give us, they're not going to give black people money to enhance black people's power, wealth, and influence. That's not going to happen. If they're approving a the budget for this thing, and if they're greenlighting it, it's because they are going to make sure it enhances theirs. The fact that you had to drag them kicking and screaming so long should be your proof to let you know they're watching every move you make. And they're going to make sure that whatever makes it to that screen, big ups them, not us. Yeah, line. It's going to be the whitest Black Panther ever. Well, even if it's not, it'll get there. Even if it starts out okay, it will eventually get there. Dark crying shame, man. I'll let you have the last word. Awesome. Um, shoot, I appreciate me being on the show and all my brothers out there, man. If you guys need some extra ways to make money, try eBay. Go in your closets. It's what the white people do. They don't get part-time jobs. They go to eBay. They set up a PayPal account, and then they get extra hundreds of dollars i do it all the time god bless you guys black first brother thank you very much for joining us here tobias um i'll let you have the last word yeah uh i'm glad you helped that brother out there uh one thing i would say is is that black people we gotta stop looking at symbolism stop looking at action yes for example the black panther his character in that country is about protect some fictional resource if you guys don't know fictitious research, you guys will know that made Wolverine Claws and Captain America Shield, and they protected it, and they ain't let nobody into their land. So you know when that movie comes out, they're going to make it so they begging white people for help. 
That's what's going to happen. And he also married Storm in the comics. They're not going to tell that story. They probably have a married Rogue or somebody. And uh, and the issue is, is that black people, we can't complain unless we start owning and controlling our own media. Even if it's on Netflix, it's no big deal. And I said it's like the thing. When I went to see 7 a.m. in L.A., Beverly Hills, one of the most whitest places on earth, that showed you that, hey, if you give them money, they'll put it there. Uh, and and, and I, I, that was the first thing that crossed my mind was, it's one of the whitest places on the planet here, to you know. But it's a move about black empowerment. And he gave them, the, the money came through, and the white folks put it there. No issues. Yeah, there were issues. Stop coming with people with no money. Well, there 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 were issues actually. Um, it was it was kind of janky out there and everything. No, it's it, it, I understand. We're a professional operation. For that reason, we don't all yeah. the issue. You all just see the final product. We know the issues as they came in. Like I say, they didn't have our posters yeah. up when they were supposed to. We the posters arrived two days earlier. They they put them up like an hour after people started showing up. We had to tell them where are our posters. Mm-hmm. We sent posters here. You ain't got none of our posters up. So things like that, brother. So it's it's not that it went off without a hitch. It's just that we did it like it's supposed to. But you are absolutely right. And what you say about um, Black Panther and Storm, I don't think that's going to happen because Storm is over there at Fox with the X-Men. Yeah. Now, it may be that they can do a Quicksilver because Quicksilver is at Fox with the X-Men. But because Quicksilver was also an Avenger, Marvel gets to use him over there at Disney, so that's why you have a Quicksilver at Disney and a Quicksilver at Fox. They may do the same thing with Storm. Who knows? They they may do that. Here's my real point. What you said about him ultimately ended up begging uh, white people to save him. Well, guess what? It, 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 I, I, there, there, was a, there was a cartoon that did that. Actually, there's, there's already been one with Black Panther. There's already been a cartoon where I think it's the Avengers go to Africa. And him and his yeah, people. It, the, it was the Ultimate Avengers Part Two. Yeah, the 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 I think the aliens come, and next thing we know, before it's over, he needs the Avengers to come save their bacon and whatnot. So, like yeah. I say, it's one of those things where if it doesn't start there, it'll eventually get there. Even if it starts yeah. out okay, you will eventually get there. Yeah. And that's and that's a shame. And it's like even like with this Empire stuff. And I bring up the black people all the time on I see these groups I'm in. And I get yelled at and say, Oh, it's just entertainment. It's just T V. Hey, why are you hating? And I said, So what's the difference between it's the sorority sisters? Well, all the same black people complaining about that show are cool with this. And I say, Look at this. I say, You idiots actually don't believe Cookie is gonna win a damn Emmy. You really believe that Terrence Howard and Taraji Henson are gonna re jump their career restart their careers on this mess right here. Well, here's the problem. Here's the problem, Tobias. The problem is, yeah, it could happen. That's the problem. That's the bad part. The problem is, yeah, it could happen. Terrence Howard or Miss Henson could end up getting an Emmy. After all, Halle Berry got an Oscar for doing what with Billy Bob Thornton? She got an Oscar for that. Denzel got yep. an Oscar for being a slave and being the most thuggish, corrupt cop in the world. So if you don't believe that they will award black people for cooning and buffooning and on the biggest show of their evenings, if you don't believe they'll do that, brother, you got to go back and check your history. They got a track record of doing this. Hattie McDaniels? We can go down the list. And, and you know, the part that kills me is, and you're right, because I didn't even think about that. And the part that kills me is that they keep complaining about the images, but they ain't watching on TV. They come out in droves. What do you think these white people are going to do? You coming out in droves supporting this. You post on social media, making making empire parties. And to be honest, they ain't building a damn empire on a damn show. But I just be honest with you. And, uh, but it's just that they are so consumed with just having a black face in front of a camera that they don't care how they get there. They don't care how they represent the community. Because I, because I know you remember this when Jersey Shore first came out. That Italian Americans came out there and said very quickly they don't represent Italian Americans. And uh, 
and I didn't hear too many Italians say, oh, that's just TV? Same thing with The Sopranos. And, uh, but yeah. I'm sorry. Same thing with The Sopranos. Yep. But black people are, like I say, these are other ethnic groups who are producing. They're actually building something. And people who are actually building something do not induct counterproductive things and counterproductive influences into their mids. Black folk are not actually building anything, so black people have this consumer mindset. The problem with being a consumer is that you're constantly looking for new things to consume. And that includes junk food. That includes garbage. And since the only thing they're feeding you is empire, that's what you're eating. I'll let you have the last word. Oh, I just want to say, hey, finally got a chance to call in. And I just want to tell you that 7 a.m., the trip to L.A. was worth it, <laughs> you know, and met some good people there, got some change of information, and that opened my mind on a lot of things there. And, uh, well, before you... Got me motivated, too. Let me ask you something. Started getting business up. Yeah. Let me ask you something now, because um, like I say, I, I haven't gotten to speak to a whole lot of people on, on the broadcast here about 7 a.m. as far as people who went to go see it. So you went to L.A. to go see 7 a.m. First of all, before anything else, when at the end of the movie, when now you, you saw 7 a.m., so you'll know what I'm talking about. When you saw the dedication at the end of the movie, when that point, a, yeah. after that point, how did you feel? Now that you had seen the movie, how did you feel? What was your impression after seeing it? I had a combination of being, excuse my language, pissed off. And, and a part, what the hell was I doing in my life? And I was taught wrong. Explain. Uh, that getting, is that getting a good job. That's nice and all, but you're not gonna get rich being an employee. And uh, and I tell you this, I watched this doc because I have some downtime, so I watched this documentary on Netflix. They were talking about like the man who made America. They talk about Car. You probably saw Carnegie and yeah. Rockefeller and those guys. All the great men in history, the white people prop up are entrepreneurs. They weren't employees, and it's just a bunch of guys with an idea. And they got rich off of it. And people needed it and they sold it to them. And they got rich and wealthy. And, and it's just that we get told to go to college. We don't get told what to go to college for as a people. Uh, we get told, we get sent to college with no money as a people. My sister had a college paid for. I joined the military. Uh, but, they, uh, but we get told to go to college with no money. But we got kids, every time you look up with new Jordans and Playstations and all that stuff, but when it comes to college, they have no money, no direction. But you got white kids with direction, and you got white parents who are fretting every day how to put money into their college fund or start a business. And it just showed me is that, one, we're not organized also the Negro Leagues. Look at what happened there. And, uh, it, it, and every time we get a bill at the Carol's Daughter Woman, I forgot her name. We sell out. I don't remember the floor selling out when they had that issue in the late 2000s. They had to get bailed out. But but we as a people, they just had me thinking, why aren't we built having our own economic? Why aren't we having our own grocery stores? You know, our, if we're going to sell, if we're going to buy Air Jordans, at least let it be from a damn black store. Uh, you know, that's just how I believe, because, I say this real quick. I got relatives from my hometown, Montgomery, Alabama. The West Side is like the poor side. Mostly black people live there. I hear so many of my relatives complain, like, "Oh, don't white folks can put business on the East Side where the white night the money's at, or they, they don't put nothing there. They want to put nothing here." And I ask them, "Well, stop it, you guys are putting up a grocery store here. The building is still there. We'll stop it. You guys put your money together." But now I said, you guys are willing to burn your gas and your time to drive to the other side of town to buy food from a person who doesn't give a crap about you. That and is that, the definition of institutionalized. When I watch 7 a.m. That kind of behavior is the definition of institutionalized. Mm -hmm. 
when you are behaving right. in a manner that is counterproductive to yourself but is habitual, you've been institutionalized. You are doing what's in the best interest of other people because you've been conditioned, not what's in the best interest of yourself. Now, um, what did you think about the quality of the filmmaking itself? Man, that was on point. It was on point. And, uh, I'm talking about HD footage. It was put in a nice area where the parking was right by the theater because I'd never been at that park at Beverly Hills before. So, hey, it was a nice short walk. Uh, nice theater. The, the the film itself, the sound quality was great. The film, like the the presentation was great. Now, there's a reason why I'm asking all this, everybody. I'm not just doing this because I'm 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 trying to get um get an ego boost off or anything. I've already talked to people about that. The real thing is because I want him to validate that for you all. Now, I know I don't know. Have have you seen Hidden Colors? Oh, yeah, I've, I've seen out the first three. Okay. Was 7 a.m. just a rehashing of what you saw in Hidden Colors? It was his own, it was his own different film. Now, even with Dr. Anderson and whatnot, and this is all important, and the reason why it's important is because if all, we're not just sitting here just rehashing something you've seen before. You know, Tariq is touching on the social and historical aspect of it. We're just touching on the socioeconomic portion of it. Everybody playing their position and not just playing it, but playing it well. Okay. Playing the position and playing it well. That's the kind of thing that I want us to look for. That's the kind of thing that I want us to start valuing because we have a way of, um, we have a way of putting out a janky product And then saying, okay, well, that'll be all right. We have a way of doing that, and we need to uh, we need to let that go. We need to start raising our standards for that. That's the kind of thing I want. Uh -huh. So I, I wanted to put out something that was worthy of it, and that was worth you know worth your while. That's the kind of thing that I wanted to do. So I hope that we succeeded at that. I hope we succeeded at that. I was impressed, and uh, I was I was impressed, and uh, because it, it it looked like you was watching one of those Netflix documentaries, like a movie, like the big budget movie. To how good the quality was to me, and uh, and and I was very impressed by that because I was I was expecting a good product anyway. Uh, at, le at least you made at least you made the film you said you was gonna make. And, uh, well, that's helpful. And I, and I, yeah, that's all I got to say. And uh, but and and that shows right there. And see, and I and I listen to this stuff, and I listen to what you say, and and I said, hey, I hope pay to go go out here, fly out there, check it out, rent a room, rent a car, and all that stuff. But it's worth it because I I travel for Alabama football games before, <laughs> and so if I could travel for a football game. You be you best believe I could travel for the black empowerment and to learn something, and and like and that's why I said like I'm playing my role now. And as soon as I got back, I went on score. I found some mentors like for business and learning because I found it's like being an employee. Yeah, you get a retirement, but they're cutting that now. You don't control your destiny. You get laid off, and finding a job is too many hoops you got to jump through to just find a job and you really underpaid as well at a, as an employee. But do you and know I'm why? Now. But do you know why? The reason why there are so many damn hoops to jump through when you're looking for a job is because we are the people who do not have our own economy. We are trying to find a job within someone else's economy, not within our own. So we're not competing for resources amongst ourselves. We are looking at the resources that white people have gathered together. White people are competing with each other for those resources. And we're trying to muscle our way into their, into their dog bowl to try to fight for the resources they've cobbled together. No wonder our unemployment stays two or three times higher than everybody else's. Because we're trying to gather resources yeah. in somebody else's yard instead of gathering resources in our own. So if we build our own economy, we'll be like the Asians talking about what unemployment problem. 
We don't have an unemployment problem. You got one. We don't have one. Yeah. I'll let you have the last word. Well, I'll say this. Because I got out you know, of the Air Force. I got out and I got a job as a recruiter. And I'm going to be independent in the next two or three. I got a plan for that. Now, I'm just going out to learn the ins and outs of the industry, how it works from there. But then I looked online, and you got white women on YouTube saying, I made this money just being an at home independent recruiter with my list of contacts and my, and my computer and a, and a fax machine and a phone. If they could do that, why the hell can't I? And I'll say this last thing. You got, we got white people with talent on YouTube making money by sharing recipes and getting some money from that. And I know we got a lot of black people that can cook. And I'm not talking about like that coon who was up there putting meat and chicken in the sink. I'm talking about people with talent. You can make money off all this stuff, but it takes a chance. You got to take a chance. And you actually do control your destiny more of a business than you do of a job. And I'll say this last thing, Jason. The military was cutting people. We had people get cut from the military last year in the Air Force. <clears throat> people came to work a day. Commander said, I see us in the office. They cut people. And those white guys were crying. So what do you think they're going to do to your black behind? At least those white guys got some, got some networks. They got some companies to go to. What about you, black people? Oh, that's all I have, TBA. Thank you very much for joining us here, brother, and please do give us a call here again.